Hey guys, it's Nadia, Jake, and Sedona today, and today we're going to talk about House of Hammer. Yes, this is a new documentary on Discovery Plus. Oh, okay, we got Discovery Plus just to watch this, <laughs> and then we canceled. Uh, you were really curious in the story. You told me that there was a documentary coming out, and uh, you kind of got wrapped up in that on the internet, and I was like, okay, I, I heard that Army Hammer's a cannibal or whatever on Twitter, like it was, a, you know, the meme of the week. And then we sat down to watch this three-part documentary on Army Hammer and his family. Oh boy, was I, I was not prepared for the, the extent to which Army's crimes are out there and also every male family member, you know, all going all the way to his great, great grandfather, uh, but especially his great grandfather, Armand Hammer, who's a like a ruthless uh, billionaire. It's really interesting and a really interesting look into trauma, into um, the nature of abuse, the cycle of abuse, that sort of thing. Kind of a very important family, just uh, like in, in terms it's, of like it's political. It's supposed to also be like a real family, kind of like su succession. So if you like the show, yeah. like we do, actually that's one of the biggest reasons why we watch the documentary, because if you watch the trailer, it says um, the aunt um, in the Hammer family, Casey, right? Um, she says, my family's like succession. I was like, ooh, sold. Yeah, so, yeah. I'd say um, that's even worse. Like there's straight up murder. Well, it actually does happen in succession. Yeah. If you know what I'm talking about. So. A anyways, um, a lot of people don't know Army Hammer. He's a big Hollywood actor who's in Call Me By Your Name. He was in The Lone Ranger. Social the Social Network. Network. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of his breakout. And so the documentary kind of takes us through him, his kind of breakout role, you know, in The Social Network and how he had this life of extreme privilege from this very wealthy family, but he wanted to not go into the family business uh, like his father, but be an actor. And yeah, so The Social Network was uh, very successful. He played the twins of the Winklevoss twins. And apparently David Fincher wanted him for the role because he exuded the kind of confidence that he felt only very wealthy <laughs> people can have. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, he knows what it's like to come from a family of, of immense privilege. So he, we're going to cast him in this role. Call Me By Your Name came out, which was a huge success and earned a bunch of critical acclaim. It seemed like his career was, you know, at its zenith when these accusations came out, these DMs that were leaked, multiple women coming forward about his uh, pattern of abuse, and I'll, we'll get into that later, but a big part of the early part of the documentary, and then we go through the rest of his family members. I thought, you know, this might be kind of boring because I'm here to learn about Army Hammer and all this, the stuff he's done, but we got that on top of this other information in this m massive, sprawling 20th century story about a ruthless family dynasty incredibly interesting. I don't know. What do you, what was your takeaway? So when I first watched the documentary, it was very much like, oh, this is going to be like a real life version of succession, cannibalism. Really interested to see like what kind of weird, I thought it was just going to be weird because I didn't think that there was going to be like true um, abuse in there from what I heard. And boy, oh boy, was I wrong, like crazy. And then his grandfather was really crazy. And then his great grandfather was really crazy. And then his great great grandfather was really crazy. And then Casey Hammer, just shedding a light on her family, she's actually produces the, sh the, sh the documentary. So I will um, say that, but you just don't get exposed to things like this. You just don't hear things like this in a normal family. Why? Because normal people can't get away with stuff like that. So it's pretty crazy to hear how much you can get away with. I mean, you know this and theor theoretically, but then when you hear it from hear from people who've actually been there. So when Casey Hammer was talking about what she was exposed to with her father and how their weekends were like and just the threat that they were under um, from her grandfather, it's pretty ruthless. Then you kind of get to see not making any excuse. And this, there is certainly no excuse at all for Army Hammer's behavior, but you don't, ask yourself why did he behave this way you're like oh of course he behaved this way because he's been told this is okay he's not been held really accountable for his actions so he just thinks he's untouchable and you can see that from like the leaked dms and everything else like the fact that he dm these things thinking that it was okay and he didn't really try to hide it and another thing that was pretty like crazy when you think about it is that when you went on talk shows and such he talked a lot about his you know like ropes tying ropes around people and his obsession with certain 
aspects and certain things. And it's like, you know, at that time, not understanding really like what he was doing behind the scenes, we all laughed about it. But now knowing everything and having everything exposed, it's it's pretty crazy. It's like, whoa, this is what he was referring to. This is what his like hobbies let him to do is hurt these people. And it's like, it, it's pretty gross, you know? And it's yeah. it, I, I thought it was well made. I would say I would rate it seven out of 10. What about you? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, I think it was a well done documentary. I think it leaned into just in sensationalism a little bit. It was very informative entertain highly entertaining but it didn't mean it it was like very subtle or you know it was just it was it was kind of a by the books sort of thing with very good information and it was you know well told but yeah it was a little heavy-handed at times so yeah i'd give it like a six six out of ten if you're interested in watching this documentary um check it out you can probably get like a free trial from discovery plus or something um but if you're mildly interested in like the army hammer stuff we don't really care about watching the whole documentary stay tuned because we're just going to be talking about it and explaining what goes on our reactions to it so if you just kind of want the overview of the the shit that went down then you can just continue <laughs> listening all right so with that let's move on to the spoiler section let's lay out the Army Hammer family dynasty. It all kind of begins, at least the documentary, has us start with Julius, who surprisingly enough was a leading member of the Communist Party. The son of this leading, you know, communist leader becomes such a mega, you know, industrialist. The, the company they own, I forget what it's called, but it was like the 12th. He was an oil tycoon. Was, yeah, oil tycoon. So it was oil. He ran this massive oil company, although it wasn't like one of the main ones. It was probably the 12th biggest one. But I think what's interesting, and we're talking about Armand, Armand Hammer here, is that the way he controlled and manipulated people was mostly through bribery and through blatant criminal activity, recording conversations with important officials, mm -hmm. um, you know, just the correct type of bribery so that he had major political influence in many different families. You know, there's plenty of footage with him and Prince Charles, well now King Charles, with the, you know, the Reagans, with the Bush, you know, all sorts of people. It's, it's really incredible kind of the political power this guy had and he had this for many decades and was a let's talk about you know arm and hammer where like the real like kind of need for power and control mm -hmm. is just so like he had this ego where he needed to control everything and i don't know maybe you can want to explain his mistress but he did have a mistress in his last marriage and then his wife found out about it and what he did is, is he made his mistress change her name legally and wear a blonde wig everywhere so that his wife would think that <laughs> it's not the same girl yeah. and apparently when he passed away apparently he didn't leave her with anything that he promised he just basically discarded her of so that gives you a point of the character of what he really was but except 10 times worse yeah, basically he passed on this legacy of total control manipulation uh, onto his son, Julian, who in my mind, Julian was probably the scariest in the whole documentary. Um, playboy kind of guy who was very abusive to his first wife until they got well, divorced. I want to say before you say that, I want to preface that by saying his father, Armand, because he was born in Russia and he had a, like his ex-wife was Russian and he really tried to recreate himself in the United States states um he almost he took a dna test and tried to like almost disown julian there was a lot of um talk about how much he felt unwanted that's kind of a running theme they don't really emote or share their feelings with each other in fact they abuse each other and julian was incredibly abusive obsessed with guns would carry guns around threaten you know girlfriends with guns he ran his home like the playboy mansion he um, shot someone and got away with it. Yep. When he was young, he shot someone over a, a, a dispute and his father basically could use money to get him out, get him out of anything. And that's kind of the lesson that these kids learn over the years is that money can let you get away with anything there are zero consequences well, for any actions you may possibly do and then julian's son michael it's interesting because julian and his first wife they have um two kids a daughter and a son and the his ex-wife takes the daughter who's casey who's army hammer's aunt the son stays with julian and michael yeah, Michael stays with Julian and grows up with him. They have a very contentious relationship. They do not get along. However, a lot of those 
similar behaviors and attitudes stick with Michael. Parties a lot, he gets reckless, etc. but he wants to piss off his dad, basically. Ends up taking over the family dynasty when Armand dies because he gains his favor, you know, he he basically wants to one up his dad. And, and does. And does. And he is currently in control of the company. And he leaves his dad with, like, basically almost nothing, I guess, yeah, in the family yeah. fortune. And his sister becomes a casualty because his sister is closer to his dad. So she he leaves her with nothing. And I can't emphasize, like, there's there's a lot that we're, you know, go, skipping over because for the sake of time. But there's so many stories about how abusive, how reckless and crazy they were with just the, the violence. There's like a statement at the end of the documentary that Michael and the company have, you know, are saying it's all falsehoods, you know, whatever's being said in the documentary isn't true, whatever. But obviously that's, you know, that's just them, them covering their asses. And then the son of Michael, of course, is Army Hammer, because I didn't know the extent to which, um, Army was doing really horrible stuff. And at first it felt a lot like in the beginning they were really shaming like the BDSM community and like kind of seems like the stuff he's texting is is sort of just like playful. It, it's just like, well, that could just be like the, what they're in, in, into. Well, like we don't want to shame people who are into that kind of stuff. But also like in the beginning of the documentary, to be honest, like it's like, they, well, they play he was legally married. Factor. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, these women believed him that they were separated, but there was nothing in works stating that him and his wife were separated. So these women were kind of regarded as almost mistresses, which I don't agree with how they were disregarded. I think everyone's experience counts. But in the beginning, it just kind of seems like he's into more kinky stuff. And he's, as the documentary goes on, you realize it's not consensual at all. You know, SAs, these women, um, he is very uncaring. There's text messages about a girl saying, you know, I, I was crying for you to stop. I was trying to run away. And he said, how turned on he was when she was doing that. Dude, I mean, that's the thing. It's like there, he would use BDSM as a front and he'd use it with people who knew very little, women who knew very little about the, the culture, rules, the practice, the culture. Yeah. They, you know, people who were totally ignorant. He did that on purpose so that he could abuse them and do things that would be totally unacceptable. Well, what I know. liked about the documentary is they had a BDSM educator. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you have to use safe word. These things, it's still consensual. It's still supposed to be like, they're still supposed to be a safe word if someone says no you stop it's not like you just do whatever you want to that person as if they're an object like they you you want to respect their boundaries and you have to talk, respect their boundaries also what was interesting was that army was allowed to have multiple girlfriends while the girlfriends could not have be with anyone else he also branded one of the women without consent. I think they're pending a SA charge on him. And it also, there's a gray line, you know, like, yes, these women agreed to some of it, but they didn't agree to other parts that also happened. He also talked about how in one of the messages to one of the girls, one of the victims, he said, you know, watching you scream score made me feel like God made me feel empowered basically you know i'm paraphrasing off obviously it's really about taking control and seizing control he would love bomb these women in the beginning and make them think that they're the only person in the world he would give them 22 missed calls if they don't pick up and such things two of the girls in the documentary would compare notes about how he approached them and it was the exact same steps he would take them on a road trip they would go stay at this motel not even the same steps the same exact location Should and yeah. lines and, and they would names. watch the same movie. Mm -hmm. He would say, oh, I've never done this before. How do you feel about doing this? And then just really take advantage. And it, it's really gross. It's really disgusting, you know? Yeah, I think it's very telling how fast his agent dropped him uh, after these allegations came out. And so did out. The, his publicist. His public yeah, it's, it's just, um, you know, at the time people were laughing about like these texts that were leaked like this can't be there was real all cannibal. Well, I never and everyone like talked about the cannibalism nobody talked about the serious essay that was going on at, you know at least nobody treated it seriously at the time but I imagine from the perspective of these agents and publicists seeing the 
wealth of uh, damning information against him, it was just like a no part, like we're, we're done. I don't think there's any way for Army Hammer to become rehabilitated. Then again, considering the industry, who knows? I don't think, so. I think there is always a way. I think people do come back. And I think with Army Hammer, there's more things going for him, to be honest, and more things not. There's a lot of local stories right now about Robert Downey Jr. helping him with rehab. But I do think there's more reasons why he can come back than why he wouldn't come back, to be honest. Honest. Please don't make Army Hammer a thing again. Don't let him come back. Please, like, watch this documentary or do some research. Like, the this, this stuff he's done, it's, you know, terrible. He should be in prison. Do you have anything else to add? I do not. Kind of made me want to drink, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, check it out if you want, like, a cool deep dive into cool, I mean, a disturbing deep dive into something, you know, very, is well done and, you know, very informative and entertaining, so I, I would recommend check it out. And um, with that note, we'll see you next time. All right, see you next time. Bye. Bye.